This video is brought to you by Captivating History. The Gilded Age is often seen as a high point in America's history. Characterized by the rise of the industrialized economy after the Civil War, it was a time when American business took off on a grand scale, making several notable business people extremely wealthy. However, although the Gilded Age is remembered as a time of great affluence, it was also a time of great inequality and corruption. Even the phrase, the Gilded Age, was taken from a satirical novel by Mark Twain, published in 1873. It is supposed to imply that something that appears golden on the surface may be corrupt underneath. Shortly after the end of the American Civil War in 1865, the U.S. underwent an enormous burst of economic activity brought about by a wave of industrialization during the renewed peace. The Gilded Age normally refers to this prosperous period between 1870 and 1900, which overlaps with the latter part of the Reconstruction. While the Civil War had some devastating effects on the U.S., it also inaugurated important changes, including the spread of the telegraph and a major expansion of the railways. Within a few years of the end of the war, America also began to experience a period of major economic growth. While the industrial period had begun in Great Britain in the 18th century, America experienced its most intense period of industrial development during the late 19th century. In many ways, America had been long destined for the spectacular spurt of economic growth, blessed with a continent of valuable resources, including coal and oil and many useful agricultural products. In fact, after the war, many European investors saw the U.S. as a good bet for business and soon a wave of money poured in from abroad. As well as attracting investors, America also went through one of its biggest ever waves of migration, which more than doubled the U.S. population. Up to this point, most Americans had roots in England, Scotland, and Wales, but the late 19th century saw many more immigrants arrive from the rest of the world, producing a much more diverse nation. As more visitors arrived and more industries expanded, the U.S. became much more urban, and many more towns and cities sprawled across the nation. This was the era of the world's first skyscrapers, when skylines began to climb higher and higher. In particular, the East Coast blossomed due to its many trading ports, and the Great Lakes region became the beating heart of the industrial boom. Chicago was one of the great cities of the age, becoming both a major railroad hub and a truly international city that attracted visitors worldwide. Cities grew off the back of new industries, and the Gilded Age is often remembered for some of its most important businessmen, many of whom became extremely wealthy at this time. The late 19th century was the age of capital, a time when private corporations rose to prominence as wealthy men invested in large-scale industries and reaped great dividends. The American colonies themselves had been partially founded by private enterprises who raised capital from their investors, giving the U.S. a strong capitalist instinct quite early in its history. The American government continued to push a pro-business stance in the 19th century, allowing private companies to develop the major infrastructure projects the nation needed. The Gilded Age presidents were often said to be remarkably unmemorable, as they, by and large, took a hands-off approach to governance. As industrialization produced many more opportunities for these kinds of private businesses, America ballooned into the world's foremost capitalist power. The downside of this economic boom was that the few people who had enough money to invest in large-scale business enterprises tended to buy up most of their competition. Soon, multiple large monopolies had formed, undermining the spirit of healthy competition. The most well-remembered and notorious of these large monopolies were the Rockefeller oil monopoly, the Vanderbilt railroad monopoly, and the Carnegie Steel Monopoly. Carnegie Steel later became the J.P. Morgan Steel Monopoly, after the well-known banker, which bought Carnegie out for $480 million. J.P. Morgan, in particular, was also one of the Gilded Age's most famous money men, one of the wealthy bankers who made New York exceedingly rich by investing in businesses across the U.S. While these grand businessmen are often still remembered as great American heroes or captains of industry, others describe these business moguls in less flattering terms, dubbing them the robber barons of the Gilded Age. 
While some of these tycoons, such as Andrew Carnegie, spent millions on philanthropic projects, most robber barons were infamously ruthless and corrupt. For example, the Wall Street and railroad mogul James Fisk was famously involved in several shady practices, from extortion to bribery to risky market manipulation. Although by 1890, the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed in an attempt to make the dangerous monopolies these men accrued illegal, the act would have little effect on the monopolies that already existed. It wasn't until the election of Teddy Roosevelt at the end of the Gilded Age in 1901 that at least some of the robber baron's power was broken. Among the most famous of the great tycoons was Cornelius Vanderbilt, a man widely disliked in his lifetime for his cunning business practices. Vanderbilt is important because he was one of the major figures behind the enormous expansion of the railroads in the U.S. The Gilded Age was the golden age of the railway, as trains remained the fastest way to move goods across large areas. In the U.S., the Transcontinental Railroad was revolutionary, as it linked the Atlantic to the Pacific for the first time. When Vanderbilt entered the railroad industry, he was already very wealthy, but he sold his previous businesses to buy up as much rail track as he could. The railroads were particularly vulnerable to being taken over by monopolies because there was a very limited amount of train tracks in any given region. Soon, Vanderbilt could charge his customers extortionate rates, confident that they had no choice but to use his businesses to transport their goods. In response to the eye-watering high fees charged by many railway companies, a collective of farmers known as the Granger Movement campaigned for fairer prices. The Granger Union would go on to have a surprisingly important afterlife, as they would inspire both the People's Party and the Greenback Party, important progressive political movements which campaigned for fairer economic conditions and more economic equality. Economic equality was a hot topic in the Gilded Age. The late 19th century saw progressive workers' movements spread across the industrialized world in a bid to give ordinary people fairer hours, better pay, and safer working conditions in factories that often used dangerous equipment. Unfortunately, many wealthy Americans increasingly believed in the theory of social Darwinism, an ideology that argues poor people deserve to be poor because they are naturally inferior. Tycoons did little to help their workers, often demanding that they work harder for longer to increase output and turn more profit. In response to worsening conditions, many American workers unionized, and the American Federation of Labor that organized these unions was founded in 1886. Other workers took a more radical path, joining more socialist groups and even turning towards anarchism. The U.S. government did little to help the situation, repeatedly halting legislation meant to improve working conditions. Tensions between workers and bosses led to several major disasters in the Gilded Age. In 1886, the Haymarket Riot in Chicago led to a series of deaths when workers' peaceful protest turned violent. An unidentified assailant threw a stick of dynamite into the crowd during the gathering in an attempt to hit a police officer. Shooting broke out, resulting in the deaths of many police officers and civilians. A few years later, a similar incident occurred in Pittsburgh in 1892. The so-called Homestead Strike saw a clash between a crowd of Carnegie steelworkers and a group of private militiamen from the Pinkerton Agency, who had been hired to police the crowds. During the violence, Henry Frick, a hated industrialist who violently opposed the unions, was almost assassinated by a disgruntled anarchist. Economic inequality was not the only major social issue of the Gilded Age. It was also a terrible time for race relations. The Native Americans suffered greatly during this period. During the Dakota Gold Rush in 1876, a war broke out between the U.S. government and the Sioux Nation, resulting in the biggest campaign against the Native Americans in U.S. history. Ten years later, in 1886, the last major Native American resistance force, led by Geronimo of the Apache, was finally defeated. The Gilded Age was also a dark time for African Americans. After federal troops withdrew from the South in 1877, the African American population lost its much needed government protection. Lynching soon became common, with angry mobs of white Southerners accusing African Americans of any manner of crimes, with little to no evidence, and proceeding to carry out extrajudicial executions. To make matters worse, 
During the Reconstruction era, the first segregation laws, or Jim Crow, were passed, making black Americans in the South second-class citizens. Although the 1875 Civil Rights Act had put some protections to prevent discrimination, the act was abolished in 1883. During this period, the enormous wave of immigration also led to a wave of nativism, a form of resentment against migrant workers. Italian and Irish immigrants were particularly picked upon, and in 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act banned Chinese immigration altogether. While these workers contributed greatly to America's economic boom, many Americans feared losing out to foreign arrivals. Many immigrants in this era inevitably turned towards a growing and corrupt political phenomenon the political machine. These corrupt organizations were typically found in major cities and bought votes in exchange for favors. The most famous of these political machines was Tammany Hall in New York City, founded in 1786. It would become notorious for corruption by the late 19th century. Political machines thrived during the Gilded Age because they provided opportunities for poorer people and vulnerable migrants. Local politicians would find jobs for newcomers in their wards in exchange for their votes. Political machine bosses often helped immigrants gain their citizenship papers faster, and the jobs they created often provided better living conditions for the people living in their area. Come election day, these faithful patrons would vote, sometimes multiple times, for their valued protectors, securing them political power for years at a time. Although corruption, poor working conditions, and rampant prejudice were all rife during the Gilded Age, it is also a time of great opportunity. Ultimately, the problems of the Gilded Age would lead to another great era in American history, the age of progressive politics, in which reforms rolled back the worst excesses of this grand age of wealth and expansion. To learn more about the Gilded Age, check out our book, The Gilded Age, a captivating guide to an era in American history that overlaps the Reconstruction era and coincides with parts of the Victorian era in Britain, along with the Belle Epoque in France. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.